When a friend says, hey, do you want this free thing at my house? My response is usually yes. I also had some hairpin legs at my shop that were from old artist tables. They were custom made with bolts on them that leveled out uh, for uneven cement floor. And Dave Beach, the iron worker, agreed to remove those bolts for me. His business is Fox Chapel Ironworks, and he made them for me originally. So I think you know where I'm going with this. Before we get started, let me remind you, you might want to subscribe. So here's the piece in its uh, beginnings, and I'm removing this bolt. Um, and also you can see what's written on the back of it. You can see that it's laminate on top. Uh, and also that it was made in China. At least the back of it was. I'm removing that bolt because I won't be needing it. I'm not adding the mirror to this piece. I'm using JB Weld Quick Wood to fix the gouge that's in the back corner of this piece. just kind of massage it together uh, it's kind of two colors in the beginning and you just kind of keep putting it together until it's all one and then add to your piece um, it gets hard pretty quickly and I added a little bit too much in that spot so um, keep in mind you don't want to add more product than you need uh, you can sand it down in approximately 15 minutes, but I let it go a little bit longer because I really had it pretty thick on there. So beyond the sandpaper, I actually come back in with this mini planer that I got from Wish, and I absolutely love this little tool. And speaking of tools, there's a lot more tools that I want to add to my uh, workshop and I do have some of them listed on my Amazon wish list. So that's a way you can help a small business to grow. So if you're interested in uh, that sort of thing, check out my Amazon wish list. And thank you for everything you do for watching and um, liking, sharing, subscribing. All that stuff helps a small business channel grow. <laughs>
uh, that this piece is giving because of the carving. So that's what each sheet looks like. There's eight sheets that look like that. Paint inlays have the paint inlaid into the sheet or uh, part of the sheet and then you add it into the paint. So it's inlaid. So I'm using Pure Ocean and Haint Blue and Holy Guacamole from Dixie Bell Paints. And I forgot to rinse before I uh, get started painting. I want to make sure there's no residue left from the cleaner. So I'm just going to uh, mist it real quick because I'm going to be using the Mr. Bottle in my painting as well. I'm opening all my jars, but I am going to start with the pure ocean color and I'm going to be using a medium oval brush. I just want to use a nice big brush and paint this uh, rather quickly and do an even blend. And this uh, brush I love to use because it's soft and so it does a nice job blending. I'm not using two separate brushes for the colors. I'm just using the same brush for everything. So I quickly do the top and then I move down to the front of the piece and I'm not worrying about getting the getting in the crevices there. I'm wanting to leave a little wood exposed uh, for that uh, boho feel. You know, everybody's into natural wood right now. So just letting a little bit of that peek out in that carved area. I am painting the entire way around the piece uh, just in case this piece would be sitting more towards the middle of a room. I doubt it, but just in case or if it peeks up over something. So now I'm adding the Haint Blue. Same brush, so I still have some Pure Ocean on it, and I'm just adding it in. And this is a first coat. I will be adding a second coat. And the paint's drying pretty quickly, so um, you know I use the Mr. Bottle at times to help me blend. And I do work that blend the whole way around the piece. I make sure to get all the tops of the drawers and everything. So now I'm doing a little planning. I'm laying out my inlays and I'm going to trim the edges of them because they're going to be butting up against each other. So I want to get that little border off there so that they can meet each other. And I'm just doing kind of a dry fit. I'm not sure whether I want to cut the pieces. I'm checking for length, but I might want to cut the pieces, but I'm just trying them on for size just to see exactly where I want my image. Do I want it just on the drawers? Do I want it to go a little bit over the top? And finally, I did make a decision, because I'm always over the top, um, to leave the entire paper and start the border along the top and just kind of work it down. And it was actually a really good fit. Just like transfers, when you're working over drawers, you have to be a little bit careful. But before I can work on that and add the inlays, I have to add a second coat of paint. So I'm just making sure, because in the past, didn't really have a plan, <laughs> and I don't want to waste any of this material. The inlays are, you might think they're kind of expensive, but you're getting eight sheets and you can reuse them. So when it gets time to uh, for me to do them, I will show you how um, I just kind of pull them away and I lay them face up and let them dry and then they can be used again. Every time you use them, the image gets a little bit lighter, but that's really cool. It looks distressed in that way. So 
So I'm going for that second coat now. And this time I'm starting with the Haint Blue. I didn't even wash my brush out. I just had it in a bag. And I'm starting down at the bottom. And I'm going to work my way up. And right now I'm only working on the front of the piece. Because I don't want this paint to dry before I get the inlays put in. So you want to put the inlays in while the paint is wet. But for the time being I'm going to get them out of my way so I don't get paint on the inlays. So using the mister bottle again, not only for blending, but it's kind of warm and so the paint's drying really quickly. So I just want to keep everything moving. Paint blue is such a pretty color. I guess that it's kind of a white, but it's kind of a blue. So you could say it ain't blue. <laughs> they use this color in the south a lot on um, porch roofs because it's supposed to keep evil spirits from the house. So I guess that's where uh, Dixie Belle sometimes gets their names from southern, southern things, southern traditions. So I love the way these colors are blending together. So if you're um, afraid to blend, get two blues, two greens, whatever, pinks. Get something in the same color family because you'll have success and then you can move on to more difficult transitions. Okay, worst nightmare. I f <laughs> somehow did not film me laying the inlays on. So I'm sure uh, we'll be doing that again. Uh, but after you get the inlays on, you want to take the mister and wet the, the inlays. You can also use a wet rag for this. Essentially, you're just trying not to have wrinkles in there. So you let it dry. And while it's drying, I'm continuing to paint the, the sides and the top in the second coat. I don't want to get any paint on the inlays. I also go back and flip the legs and put another coat on them. And then it's dry and I can come back. And again, I use the Mr. Bottle and I prefer the Mr. Bottle here as to a rag, but um, you miss the piece. You just want to get the, the paper good and wet, and then the magic happens because you peel it up slowly because you don't want to tear your paper because you want to be able to use it for a, another application. I've seen people get three, four, or five images out of one sheet. Look at this. Oh, I love it. It's gorgeous. So again, I carefully remove the sheet and lay it paint side up to let it dry. You also want to make sure that when you inlay the sheets that you're putting the paint side down into your paint. <laughs> You can see a few wrinkles in it, but that is totally okay with me.
you can be more careful with the application, but I kind of feel like this application, it's just kind of a boho vibe, and that's what's happening. I love it. Now I'm taking some holy guacamole and the paint's kind of thick and I'm using a palette knife and I'm just kind of going along randomly along the edges and just kind of giving some highlight to the piece, just some definition and some added texture. And she's up. The legs have been added and don't mind my messy workroom. I pull a bar stool up to see if it's a good fit for height. And I'm also applying at this time a coat of satin clear coat. And that's a Dixie Belle uh, product as well. And you just want to make sure that you coat um, the inlays because they're, they can be reactivated with water so you just want to make sure that you keep uh you that you seal them Time to add that beautiful gold hardware back on. And I decide to spray that little bar stool. Now, I didn't really take great pains in prepping this because uh, it was previously painted, so it's a bonus. So let's look back to where we started with this piece and check it out now. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at levintagedecor.company and on Instagram we're levintagedecor and on Facebook we're levintagedecor Altoona. Stay well.